Okay, so uh, this morning's service is about surrender. So who enjoys pain and suffering? Raise your hand. <laughs> Eric, one. Oh, the girl's leaving. All right, so um, if you enjoy pain and suffering, you're slightly masochistic, I don't know. Survival yes. strategy. Survival strategy, yeah. Basically, none of us really enjoy pain and suffering. I would, I'm going to assume that, right? We don't. It's not really something that we like. But um, if we think about the providence of God, right? The providence of God, the failure, the beginning of the failure of the providence of God is that our hearts, the human heart, fell away from God. We separated ourselves from God. So in essence, the most important thing in the providence of restoration, in the providence of resurrection, is bringing our hearts back to God. So <clears throat> somehow, that's not an easy process, right? If it had been an easy process, it probably wouldn't have taken humanity, what, 6,000 biblical years to uh, arrive to this place that we are at today. In a, the place that we are at today is still a place filled with chaos, right? Internally and externally, you know, we have wars going on in other countries and we have wars going on inside of us and we have wars down the street, you know? And there's all kind, there, you know, once you, once, you, once you step into the life of another person and you find out what's going on inside of them, you'll often find out that there's there's a war going on in in the hearts in our in the heart of even the most peaceful looking person there might be a lot going on you know a lot so um, <clears throat> so we haven't quite made it to peace and so in other words that place of restoring our relationship like of 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 our hearts coming back to god is is a hard thing to do. It's a very hard thing to do. It's not easy. You can't study in a in a. I you know my daughter's my daughter's um, in GPA right now. Mm -hmm. So she called and she's like, "Why am I making? What am I doing here? <laughs> Just making money." And I was like, mm. "But she was struggling so much." And I was like, "Actually, the process, the process of going out." And facing hardship is the process of hitting your limitation so that you can surrender your heart to God. <clears throat> so you can feel, feel that problem. So in a way, right, all hardship, all hardship is a pathway, is a pathway to surrendering our hearts. So every difficulty that we go through in essence, is an opportunity, right? So, in the Bible, um, at the time of Moses, he saw the burning bush, right? But in order to approach the burning bush, he was actually told to take off his shoes and to lay down, prostrate. He wasn't even allowed to look at the burning bush. He had to lay down on his, on his stomach. And in, and in the old Jewish tradition, they talk about the sackcloth and, and the, the process of repentance, of being like a process of almost like tearing your skin off, right? Of, 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 of total, total surrender. So how do we get there, right? How do you get there to a place where you can completely surrender your pride, surrender your pain, Surrender our failures, surrender our confusion, surrender our sorrow, surrender our expectations, surrender our intellect, surrender our false love, surrender our mistakes, surrender our false pride, right? Sometimes we don't even know, we are not even aware, or even surrendering our fear, right? Like to completely prostrate yourself in front of God and surrender everything. Surrender everything. So, in order to get there, you have to make 
100% effort, right? And in, in, in the divine principle, it says, you know, man's portion of responsibility, God's portion of responsibility is 95% portion of responsibility. Human portion of responsibility is 5% portion of responsibility. But that 5% responsibility is for us 100% responsibility, right? For me, it's 100%. So in order for us to, to really return back to God, we have to give 100% of our hearts, of our hearts, of our soul. And, you know... Many times, you know, you can like do a prayer condition or you can do, um, you know, a certain activity, but it's really, really our life, our life itself is the condition, right? Our, the, the trials of our life are the offering. The difficulties, you know, whatever it is that you are trying to accomplish, whether it's you're being a parent or you're in having a business or you're going to school or you're in a relationship everything <clears throat> everything that you do has the possibility of failure right and the more you invest into it the more disappointing that failure is going to be if you fail right if you fail so sometimes it's hard to invest our, our utmost hearts because we want to protect ourselves. We want to protect, we don't want to, we don't want to be disappointed. We don't want to fail. We don't want to face our, our shortcomings. We don't want to crash and burn, right? Nobody wants to crash and burn. But it's that process of crashing and burning when we put our whole hearts in there that is the opportunity to really hit our limitation, to hit that bottom in your heart where you've given your utmost and you really have nothing left to give, you know? And that's when you, and that's when you, that's when you meet God. That's when you meet God, right? So Reverend Moon, when we joined the Unification Church, you know, we didn't get a nice place to live. We, we basically were sent out into the world um, kind of abandoned into the worst places of the world. <laughs> we were sent out fundraising door to door to, you know, many people, I mean, in a way, at the risk of our lives, right? In a way, you never know where you're going to go and what's going to happen. And some people actually did lose their lives fundraising. Um, <clears throat> but it's at that place... Um, because Reverend Moon wanted us to meet God. He didn't want us to have a concept of God. He didn't want us to have a philosophy about God. He wanted us to experience God, and he wanted us to have a relationship with God. Um, and um, at one point, when Reverend Moon said, you know, when I die, when I die, who is going to take care of God? <laughs> so that's... That means there's 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 a relationship, right? There's a there's such a profound relationship between us as humans and God. And in a way, right, we all want to get there. We we all want to be close to God. I'm assuming that. Maybe not. <laughs> that is um assumption, I guess. So failure failure is an opportunity. Right. Failure is an opportunity, and sometimes we don't even know, right? We don't know what's behind the door, right? The behind the door of, of our shortcomings, right? You're like, everything's fine, t -t -t -t, and then suddenly, if things don't go fine, suddenly you open the door, and there may be something behind that door that you don't even know is there. So failure, in a way, is 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 a way of finding out what's really going on in our who we finding out who we really are, finding out who we really are, because um, until you hit that point, you don't know what you're gonna do, you don't know how you're gonna behave, right? So, so, in a way, we should seek failure. I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't seek failure as your goal, but we shouldn't fear failure, right? When we have a goal, when we have something we want to accomplish, we shouldn't be afraid of not making it, right? Because even if you don't make it, 
The effort is never lost. And the effort is part of the process. The effort is indeed almost, is almost the goal. It's almost like the goal to put 100%. And if you fail, if you fail, uh, efforts like money, right? Cash, spiritual cash in the bank, in the bank of God's heart, because God never forgets. Now, God never forgets. God never forgets the effort, the effort that you put into something, you know? Yeah, I remember one time I was really having a really, really, really rough day. Maybe I said, talking about this already. And I was like, oh, Heavenly Father, I failed at this, and I failed at that, and I failed at this, and I failed at it all. <laughs> and then God was like, oh, but do you remember? And like God started giving, like literally giving me examples of, of, of specific moments that we had together. Like specific moments and, and, and him saying like, I remember you did this. And I remember you did this. And I remember we were there together. And, and I'll never forget that. So that really carried me through some hard times. Just to know that God had not forgotten, had not forgotten everything, everything, everything in our lives. From the tiniest, smallest thing, God doesn't forget. So, the process is always a lesson. So the goal, the goal in our lives, we have lots of goals, but ultimately our, our goal is to surrender to God. Like, to be able to surrender to God. So, the instructions, as by Charles' advice, the, the instructions are give, it, give your heart, give your heart, you know, give your, give your love, give your deepest, try your best, you know, try your best. Even if it's something small, even if it's just something that seems insignificant, even if it's just one person or one thing, it's valuable, right? It's valuable. One person is valuable. So even if you can invest into one person, even if it is yourself, it's valuable. It's of utmost value. You're going to have to figure out how to do that. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Dear Sonny Father and our true parents, we want to offer just our gratitude to you. We want to thank you for um, just being faithful and loyal and being loving and kind and forgiving. Heavenly Father, for always, always believing in us when everything, when we don't believe in ourselves. Heavenly Father, we're just so indebted to you, and we just humbly off ask you to strengthen us and to give us humility and gratitude, and that you can give us beauty and and love, Heavenly Father. We offer this prayer together to you as a community in the name of our true parents. Sure.